We've got the score and I wanted to take a look with you because I think the orchestration is awesome. It's definitely amazing. So it's James Lipton Howard, main orchestrator. He works with him. Uh, he does most of the orchestration. So this is pretty awesome. This is insane score. It's a big orchestra, plenty of overdubs. So let's just jump into it. What I wanted to do is to just to take a look on what we orchestrated yesterday, which is this. Let's see real quick how big the orchestra is and what part we've got. So this is this part here. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it just once. For those who are not used to see or to read scores, usually it goes like this. This is gonna be woodwinds. Then we're gonna have brass. Then we're gonna have other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> which are my orchestral enhancer sort of thing, which is the art, celestas, percussion, etc. It's this part here. We've got the percussion here, two arps, one celesta, and two choir sort of thing. And then we've got the strings, which usually in the score don't take that much space, but it's what we hear the most always. So uh, you're going to see a lot of stuff going on here, but you won't hear most of this. <laughs> then we're going to have the brass that for more epic scores, you're gonna hear this and sometimes you just have like the trumpet which is here trumpet usually is here and uh, and you can't even see it and then it sounds louder than everything else and then you're gonna have the strings which is what you hear you're gonna hear here most of the times you're gonna hear the violins then i'll describe what instruments are doing what what we've got here is we've got flutes one and two so it's wood at two oboes one and two clarinets one and two then we've got bassoons one and two horns one, two, four, five, six. So we've got four horns in this specific cue. And so we've got three trumpets, but in this case, we've got one playing the melody. Uh, we've got four trombones, so trombones one and two, three, four. And I'll explain exactly what we are doing because what I would like to talk about what instruments are doing the melody, what instruments are doing the like the, the movement part, the motor part, what instruments are doing just background long notes, and then what instruments are doing those pizzicatos, etc. So we've got a tuba. For percussion, we've got glockenspiel, piatti, and grand casa, or at least in this moment, we've got that. And then we've got two arps, we've got celesta, we've got the choir, and then we've got the strings. I want to talk about the strings for a second. Uh, we've got violins one and two, and then we've got violins one and two overdub, then we've got viola, and then we've got viola overdub, then we've got violoncello, then we've got violoncello overdub, and bass. So for the overdubs, and at some point, I think we've got... We've got overdub percussion as well. So overdub, maybe it's samples or maybe it's uh, they recorded twice. So, so the violins one and two are doing something and then recording them again doing something else. Or maybe it's pre-recorded from samples, from live verse. For percussion, the same thing. Maybe it's a separate session for percussion or samples. Let's, let's take a listen one more time. Let's focus on the sound of the melody for a second. And I'm doing this because yesterday we, we were working on this and we were trying to replicate this sound. We were guessing and we were trying to using samples and challenging ourselves just using one library. Like you, you can hear most of the things, but we can miss a few things. And I just wanted to see exactly what we were trying to replicate. All right, let's listen to this one more time. So let's focus on the melody. We've got tan, ti, do, ran. And I clearly hear violins or strings. And in fact, when I was doing the mock-up, that was all I did. Just basically strings, just basically violins one. And we combined that violins legato patch with the violins staccato patch. And here we go. All right. Now what we've got here is lots of woods. We can see we've got flutes one and two. We've got oboes one, because the other one is doing it, it's going with the pizzicatos. Then we've got clarinets. All right, cool. What we see up here is clarinet one and two and oboes one and two. For the oboe one and the clarinet one, which are the ones that are dubbing the melody, there's a line that says Q. And basically what this means is it's written here when they extract each part you know, that the musician have when they are going to record. They they have that melody, they, but it says Q, which means maybe we'll record this or maybe not. It's there, we'll try, depending on how it sounds with the orchestra, if we like it, we'll record it. If we don't like it, we'll just toss it. 
no play, no music. Just do not play for that part. It's there just in case. And then we've got the flutes one and two doing the melody. Those flutes one and two, if you see, they are in the sort of like the mid register. Even though it seems like uh, it's a high register, this for flutes is mid register. And mid register flutes don't project as much sound. So having two flutes in this register and having the violins, we would hear more of the violins, but still. To me, it doesn't sound too much like flutes, but anyway. And this, I, I messed up the melody, as, as you can see. I did tan ti do tan. And it's not like this, it's... Then the second time around, I, I did it this way, but the first time I did it differently because there's, there's another part in the movie where this cue is, and it does... So I messed up the melody. It truly is... So anyway, I don't think so, but basically what I'm saying is the oboes and clarinets that are Q, I don't think they record because otherwise we would hear a little bit more of the woodwind's weight. We would hear a little bit more of woodwind's color in that melody. So that's what we've got. So flutes one and two doing the melody in the mid register, we don't hear them that much. I don't even know if they actually recorded flutes. Oboes one and two, oboe one is Q, and the oboe two, clarinet two, bassoons are doing the pizzicato part. So as you can see, we've got the um, pam, 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 pam. And this is... Is this like the motion part of the crystal textures we can hear? So this part, this pam, 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 Basically, we've got the Celesta, we've got the R2, we've got the Glockenspiel, we've got the uh, bassoons and clarinets and oboe. So bassoons, one and two, clarinet two and oboe two in, uh, in pizzicato, um, pa, 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 type of thing. And then we've got the violins two doing the same thing with accent, uh, pizzicatos. And we've got the viola doing the same thing in pizzicato. And then we've got the violoncello doing the same thing in pizzicato. Essentially... So that um, pam 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 part, we've got the uh, violins, two violas and cellos in pizzicato. We've got the the woodwind, we've got the clarinets, one clarinet, one oboe and bassoons. And then we've got the celesta, we've got the glockenspiel, we've got the arp doing that part. It's a mix of instruments that makes sense. So basically, if you've got the arp and the strings pizzicatos, they're going to blend together perfectly, right? And then we've got the double reeds, we've got the oboe and the bassoons, they're going to blend very well as well with that mix. And then we've got the glockenspiels and the celesta that are going to add a little bit of a spark and definition to that clink, clink, clink part. Now, what do we have in the background? Like the stuff that's like the long sustained background notes. So what we can hear is low strings, basically. There's more than that, based on what I see in the score, but yes, there are lower strings. We've got the double basses, uh, just, they're just doing root notes. And then we have overdub cellos, so either samples or they've re recorded this part. What we see here is basically an F note, double bass, and then we see another F note and the C note. So basically we have, we've got sort of like a power chord long notes kind of thing, with double basses down an octave, and then the cellos up an octave, and then the fifth above. That's why we get this very powerful bass. This is what we've got is like, if we went here to low strings, strings long, low, and we did this. Yeah, so if we did like this. talking about parallel fifths and octaves that's exactly what we've got here is very common as well it gives a lot of power to the low end and there's still clarity basically just octaves and fifths so that's that part we're gonna have the trombone as well doing this so we've got trombones one two three four so and now we are we have a little bit more of course we've got that lower octave with the bass trombones so we've got trombones one and two and then we've got 
uh, three and four than maybe our bass trombones. It says bass three four, and we've got the F and the G, uh, F and the C note, which is this. They are basically doubling the cellos. So we have the typical Hollywood trombones voicing, which is. These are not trombones, but it's just an ensemble, but you get the idea. It's root, fifth, and third upon octave. That's what we've got. Plus, uh, we are gonna have this note here. The third inside the voicing. And moving parallel, no problem. That's basically what we've got. So we've got our parallel open chords in the lowest strings and trombones. Moving basically just parallel movement. That's what we've got there, um, adding support. For long notes, we also have the horns five and six, doubling the upper trombones. So the upper trombones, we would have these, and these two notes, we would have them doubled with horns as well. Which is kind of like replicating if when they were composing this, they were using an ensemble patch. That's you know, if you want to replicate that with the orchestra, that's what we'd, you would have the low trombone, the trombones, low trombones, tenor trombones, the horns doubling the upper range of that voicing. And then so you've got the choir, beautiful choir, bam, bam, ba, dun, dun, da, dun, dun, da, dun, dun, which is sort of like a small choir, not the big choir. When we've got the big choir coming in the second time around, so if, if you remember that the, the second time around, we've got like bigger choir. Those are sopranos and altos. The first time is just um, a smaller choir. Tan, tan, tara, tan, tan, tara, tan, tan, tara, tan, tan. That's what's doing. You can see the figure here. Tan, tan, zara, tan, tan. And you can see um, the legato here. Short, short, tara, short, short, tara. And that's what's doing the choir. And then later on, the choir. And big choir, sopranos and altos. And then what I was going to say is choir with horns, which is very typical for the choir to go with the horns. So we're going to see horns one to four. So A2 here and here. We basically have the exact same thing that we've got here with the choir. Pam, pam, paradandan, which is doing this. That's basically why it's doing. Tan, tan, tada, tan, tan. And horns are going with, with that choir part. You've got the melody with the highest with the violins, and then the flutes are doubling. Just a little to just to add a little bit of color if they actually record it. Because basically what I hear is just the strings. The the strings are in a strong range, the flutes are in the mid-range, so they don't project as much. Maybe they're gonna thicken the line, but they're not gonna color it that much. For the movement type of thing, we're gonna have double reach and uh, and all the short stuff, right? We're gonna see pizzicato, we're gonna have the arp, we're gonna have the celeste, we're gonna have the glockenspiel, and we're gonna have a staccato, double reach, the uh, the oboe and the bassoons, and also the clarinet, doing the um, pa, 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 inner movement, right? Uh, so that's for that. Then for the long notes, like that background sustain supportive notes, we're gonna have the lower strings. Basically, we're gonna have the double basses and cellos, power chords, long notes type of thing, and we're gonna double that idea with the bass trombones and trombones, one of the trombones is going to do the third and that upper range of that trombones voicing is going to be doubled by horns as well. Then we're going to have the choir to add a little bit of color and movement. So we're going to have the choir, small choir, dun, dun, di, do, dun, dun, that's going to go with the horns, with horns one to four, so A, two, two horns in the upper note, two horns in the lower note. That's kind of what we've got so far. Uh, let's mention a couple of things that I missed. So we talked about the flutes, and we know what the flutes are doing, we know what the oboes are doing, we know what the clarinets are doing, what the bassoons are doing, we know what the horns are doing, and we've got the trumpet. We haven't talked about the trumpet. So the trumpet basically is doing the melody. Dun, tiro, dun, dun, tiro, dun, dun. The, what happens here, though, it's, uh, it's Q. So it's Q. Q, again, means that it's there, maybe we won't record this. And I don't think they record this. I, don't, I cannot hear any trumpet. What I am curious about is that note, that long note that we hear, which is, ah, towards the second part. Maybe it's an overdub or something. Let's see if we can hear the trumpet in that, inside that melody. Dun, di, do, dun.
I, I basically hear violin study, da, 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 and if I hear anything else, it would be very low in the mix and it would be flutes maybe, but I don't even hear them, not trumpet for sure. So it's Q, they didn't record this. And why they didn't record it's just basically it's directors there that they are deciding maybe um, it gives it a little bit more a lighter type of sound. They don't want it epic in that moment. When you watch the movie, it, it'll, it'll make sense. It's not an epic moment. It's a beautiful moment, but it's not epic. So maybe we don't need that sort of like brass trumpet sound in there, even though it's not voiced in a way that's going to make it sound epic. And it's in a register that's not going to sound too much. Basically, it's just going to thicken the line. Same concept as the, fl as the flute. But still, it's going to it's gonna add that color there. It's not going to sound epic, but maybe they, they didn't want the trumpet color in there. So moving down, the trumpet that we just talked about, we talked about the trombones, one, two, three, four, tuba, we haven't talked about the tuba. So the tuba is basically doubling the uh, the bass and uh, it's Q. So to me, I think they, they didn't record the tuba. The glockenspiel, we talked about the, the glockenspiel, piatti in Gran Casa is the ksh. This comes from here and there's a cymbal roll. And we've got the Gran Casa and piatti super typical hit at the end of the cymbal roll. And that's what we've got here. And then we've got the arp. The arp, we haven't talked about this, but basically we've got arpeggios down and up, down and up, down and up. Don't confuse this part. This is eighth notes, taka, 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 with the um, pam, 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 pam. So we've got the arp one doing this and the arp two doing the the bam 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 with the celeste that we talked about. We've got the choir that stas it till the, the for the first eight measures, then comes in, it's bigger. And then we've got um this part, this is the small choir, got the violins, the over uh, violinist one doing the melody, violinist two doing the bam 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 part. Then we've got the overdub violins that we haven't talked about. All right, it's Q. All right, so overdub means they are re-recording because otherwise they wouldn't cue this. So what you are seeing here, it's just chord, basically. So it's bam 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 bam. So that's what we. That's kind of kind of thing. The short note would be shorter, so it's long note and the staccato. Zan tan zan tan. Now it's Q, so maybe they record. I don't know if it's there. Let me see. I don't think it's there. If it's there, it's very subtle. But if it was there, the cool thing about this texture is that what what it's doing is basically just you can see as as they are creating a space for the choir. Choir is beautiful. That part is dan dan tiro dan dan tiro dan. Yeah, no, no, that part is beautiful, and they are making a space. So as you can see, basically what we've got here. For this part, there's always a space. So for example, we've got this, this string doing za, ta, za, ta. And then space for this to sort of like tan, tiro, tan, tan, tiro. So it's sort of like a question and answer sort of thing, right? So this part of the choir, which is the beautiful part that we hear. So when we are talking about, you know, uh, mixing and clarity and definition, all those things that we're talking about, like mixing and EQing. The first and most important part is the orchestration. Before mixing comes orchestration. It's orchestrated the right way so so every element is in balance or we can hear every element. And before that, it's the idea, it's the composition. And it's like, well, we've got this idea representing this idea, then this stops for a second, we've got this other idea, and it just stops, then this, this, this idea sort of like... Tan tiro tara tan tiro tara ton tara tara ta. It's sort of this combination. I know it's very simple, but I just wanted to point this out. That's it. But then we've got the the viola doing pizzicatos. Then we've got a viola over dub Q as well. And then we've got the cello doing the pizzicatos and pet cello over dub. So this is very typical Hollywood orchestration where we've got the strings twice. Then we've got string longs and the string short notes. It's very typical now. Uh, and just a one strings ensemble, it's not gonna cut. It's not gonna do it uh, because we're gonna start dividing things. It's gonna sound too thin. We, we want that sound where we've got shorter strings and longer strings. Literally one string short, like one string pass with the short note and one string pass with the long note. And that's what we see here. We see an overdub for each section. We've got an overdub for violins, an overdub for piano, an overdub for cello. We don't have an overdub for bass. I tried to do that uh, with uh, with a one strings orchestra. It was uh, I think it was uh, 64 strings. 
It doesn't sound like samples, right? When you've got samples, you're like, okay, ensemble patch, long notes. All right, ensemble patch, short notes. It's like, wow, it sounds big, right? When you're trying to replicate that with the orchestra, it's going to sound like that because you either have to divide it or you have to record it twice if you want to mimic that samples sound. And now we're talking the orchestra mimicking samples, which is very common. Um, In Hollywood, they've got the budget. They are just trying to get the sound no matter, and they are using the best of both worlds to get that sound. Like the emotion that the orchestra is trying, it's, it's able to produce, samples have a harder time. Now the precision, the aggressiveness, and the size of the samples, the orchestra will have a hard time. And then you'll have to start using recording techniques like you know, separating the sections and so they, you have more control when you are mixing or recording several times to make it sound bigger, etc. All right, cool. And now before we finish the class today, Today is going to be a short class. I just wanted to I just wanted to show you this other one here, which is a little bit later. This comes back, Apatone. Now this is bigger, amigos. So this part here is F, and now here. And so let's just take a look at this because the orchestration vastly different now. Let's see. So we're going to have flutes now. It's up an octave, huh? So up an octave means could the flute go up an octave for sure? Yes, absolutely. It could go up an octave. That's the range for the flute. So now we've got the flute up an octave, doubling with one flute down an octave. And then we've got the oboes one and two doing the melody. And then clarinets and clarinets one and two doing the melody. And then we've got bassoons. Uh, doing other stuff. Now we've got the entire woodwind section doing the melody, right? Um, so it's not like we've got the flute and then we've got Q and we've got the pizza and the woods helping with the pizzicato. No, now we want the melody to sound bigger. So if we look at this, so the oboes and the clarinets are doing the same thing, but if we look at this measure here, I love when, when, when I see things like this. So basically it's not the, it's not the melody. It's not like this is down an octave or anything like this. So the oboe, the oboe two is doing internal harmonies it's basically, we have the melody, and then we've got the second instrument in the family or a similar instrument in color doing something in terms of shape, direction, and rhythm that's similar, but it's not exactly the same. And in a way, it's going to help, it's going to add weight to that element, also going to add a little bit of variation and interest. And you can see that in every big composer from John Williams to, uh, to, to John Powell, James Don Howard, you can see that. And sometimes it, that's more of a, the, the, the orchestrator's work rather than the composer. The composer would do it, it just they don't have time. Sometimes they'll just do samples. And the orchestrator does things like this, which is what makes the orchestra sound interesting. Um, so basically we've got, kind of looks like it's the melody, but it's not the melody. It has the same shape, the same length, same structure, and the same direction, but it's not exactly the same thing. Sometimes you will do the exact same thing and then it'll just change a few notes, and sometimes you'll do inner harmonies that go in the same direction, uh, but just basically thicken the sound a little bit. So the same thing happens with the clarinets. Now we've got that power course still in the, in the lower strings, We've got a tuba and bass and trombones and all that. Now we don't have cues. So the tuba and the trombones are doing the same thing. Then the horns are doing the same thing. Now, in this case, the the horns one to four, the they are going with the melody. Dun ti do dun dun ti do dun dun ti do dun. For the melody now we've got violins one and the overdub is simplified. Now we've got open sixth instead of that closed pointing. Essentially, what's happening here is we've got more weight, more orchestral weight in the melody, so more instruments playing the melody. Sort of like the same instruments doing like the long notes. Now, because we've got more instruments playing the melody, uh, we don't have that many instruments for the um, pam 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 for the like the inner movement. But it's okay because we've got plenty of percussion overdubs. All right, cool. So what we've got here in this. It's either samples or they're recorded in a separate session. So it's over that. And this over that percussion that we see here, uh, the first time around, it's here. We've got surdos or punchy bombos. Then we've got low bombs and taikos. And then the seng seng thimbals. And then the, uh, the doll and taikos. So imagine a dolls and taikos ensemble. Pam, 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 pam. It's this, this line here. Pam, 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 pam. So that's the Dolls and Taikos. Then we've got the Surdos. That's basically uh, doing the downbeat of each 
Sur dos panchi bombos. All right, so on top of that, then we've got the, the Seng Seng symbol, which is this and those are ducks. Lower in the mix. That's basically what we've got. And then we've got the the song bells, this part. With the melody. So anyway, I don't know if they've recorded these or just samples. They sound like samples to me, uh, but I don't know for sure. 